Okay, so yesterday was a big day. You guys made a person. Not sure about the name that we came up with. It's a little bit off, a little bit out there, a little little more um, ethnically diverse than would normally go with my ethnicity. But nonetheless, Lafonda Walks was born yesterday. It was a tragic tale. Lafonda Walks talked, had a birthday, talked, died, and then talked again. And that's where we were. But what the concept here is, is that by using classes, we are now organizing our code, not just from one place where it runs all in one line, not just into methods where each method performs a separate task, but also into now into classes so that each class has its own methods and its own properties, and it can execute and run different things. So we made the person class. And the person class was defined according to the way we had des described it before we even started coding. We described the properties of a person, and we described the methods of a person. And then we translated that over to our code in this format. Birth, a person can give birth. Die, a person can die. Talk, a person can talk. Okay. But there's one thing here that seems to be missing. And I'm going to go over what that would be by going back to our example. And let's make a new person today. Okay? Let's build a new person. And so I'm going to ask you guys for another name today. Someone to go with LaFonda. Kip. Is that K-I-P? Kip equals a new person. So now we have Kip. Now, if I think back to the way we worked with LaFonda, in order to actually give Kip, and Kip is going to be a, a boy, right? Yeah. In order to give Kip his name, I would execute a line just similar to this, LaFonda.name equals LaFonda walks, right? And I would say, Kip.name equals Kip walks. But I don't want to do that. I think that's kind of a waste of time for me having to write two lines of code just to do this. Very often when you're born, your parents already have a name picked out for you. I bet you a lot of you were born with a name already picked out. So the second you were born, they said, oh, there's baby, there's baby Steven, or there's baby yeah. Kip, right? So what I want to do is I want to go over to the person class. And as you remember, what very first method we wrote was this method right here. Question, what is special about this method and what is it called? It doesn't have a return type. That's right. There's nothing there for a return type. What else is special about this method? The name of the method matches the name of the class. And what is this kind of method called? It has a name. Constructor, right. This is a constructor method. It's used to construct the class. That was a special method, and that's what we're using when we build a person. But what I want to write right now is under that, I want to write public person string name. What I've done right here is I've created a second method that has the same name as the first method. Question, you should know what this is from our unit on, on methods. What's that called? Two methods, same name, different parameters. Overloading, that's right. So to be clear, what we've done, here's the terminology, we've overloaded our person class constructor. This is an overloaded constructor. So, and again, I want to be clear, when I use these terms with you guys, you kind of have an idea what I'm talking about, right? So I've overloaded the person constructor. So here's how I construct a person now. I give birth, just like I did before. But now, I'm going to assign the name. But here's where I got a bit of an issue. I've made a parameter right here called name. I also have a property called name. Those two things are spelled exactly the same, right? Name and name. 
One way I could resolve this is to change the name of one of these. I could call this name one or the name or something like that. And that would then resolve it because the problem is going to be how I'm going to use this. But before I do, let's go jump back to our other one. And now because we have this second constructor, we can actually put the name right in here. So now it will use our second constructor right here. Because now it will call the constructor that takes one parameter, a string. And I've just fed it a string. I've put the string into the input of that method. I've passed it as a parameter. Okay, but here's the problem. So now sitting in this variable right here, sitting in there is the words kip walks. It's sitting in that parameter. But I also have one up there called name. And those two things aren't the same thing. This is a parameter and this is a property. It's a, it's a global variable and this is just a, a little variable that was passed. So how do I copy one into the other? Well, you'd think you could write a line of code that looks like this. You could go name equals name. But that's, the computer gets confused by that. You can actually see what it says. The value is never used or assignment to itself. That's like saying x equals x. The code seems redundant to the computer. It doesn't understand what you mean by this. When you put a line like this, it's saying, well, do you want me to put this thing into itself? Or what about the one up there? Do I use that one? I don't know. I'm confused. So the computer is confused right here. So we need a way to change this so that the computer isn't confused. The simple way would be just to rename one of these. But I'm not going to do that because I want to show you the way you can do this. How you can do this to refer to the one up here, the one that's part of the class, I need a way to refer to Kip's name. Okay? But Kip is an actual person. Kip is an object of this class. But back here, when I'm defining the class, right here, when I'm creating the class called person, it has no idea what the name of it's going to be later on. Because it might be LaFonda, and it might be Kip. It could be anything. So at this point, I can't put Kip.name, because that doesn't make sense in this context. So the keyword you want to use is in front of the very first name, you put the keyword this dot name. This is a special keyword that refers to the class itself. Because at this point, the class has no name. It's just class person. So the second I put this dot name, this means this person. So this person's name means that thing. So now it's saying, take that, which is that, and assign its value to that. Okay, so the keyword this is a very um, useful keyword within a class. Okay, because notice, I, I don't know if you notice, when you type this and put a dot, now you have access to all the stuff inside the class, including private things, because you're inside the class itself. So you're access to um, the name, but you also have access to the other three properties. And notice that NetBeans will draw a little lock there. Why does it draw a lock? Because they're private, that's right. These, it gives you a quick visual cl clue that those three properties are actually private. So if I'm outside the class, um, it won't affect it. OK, now, get rid of that. You'd think, well, can I use the keyword this back here? Like, what happens if I put this dot? Well, this would refer to this class now. The class called classes example, which has no properties. It only has one method called main. That's all that's in this class. So this really works, but there's nothing for it to talk about. There's nothing to refer to here. So now let's try and have Kip talk. Kip dot talk. Okay, and we'll run that code. And what we should see. Da -da -da -da.
Okay, there we go. We will see that it says, my name is Kip Walks and my age is zero, and if you think I'm a male, the answer is false. So it worked. In one line of code, it was able to put the name directly into the class through the constructor. But we got a problem. According to Steven, Kip is a boy. This is, you guys know which movie he's referring to, by the way? Anyone else know? Napoleon Dynamite, right? Yeah, Napoleon Dynamite. I knew that. I knew that right away. I knew it. I knew that. Um, Kip's not a girl. We need a way to change Kip's gender. And we've locked gender. It's a locked private property because you can't just change your gender. Or can you? Let's go over to the person class and let's write another little method into it. We had birthday. Let's write a public void method. I think I'll just call it operation. Because I've heard you can get an operation to change your gender. Now, here's the problem. If I just go is male oops, equals true, does that really change the gender? Does that really perform the operation? Well, it only works if you're already a female. So really, we need a little bit more than that. We need to say, well, if you're a male, like if is male equals true, then is male equals false. Otherwise, is male equals true. Okay, so I just wrote that as just a tiny little method there, and I took a few liberties there. One, I didn't put curly brackets in. You can certainly do that. Okay, I'm not saying you don't need to put curly brackets in. Two, I've moved the code up to the same line as the if statement. I'm just trying to compact my code here. This isn't necessarily good style. It's not necessarily bad style of code either, but you may not be comfortable writing your code this way. You might also want to write uh, this is, uh, that is male part there. You might want to um, say is male equals equals true. You, if you're not comfortable writing an if statement the way I just did, you could do that. But remember, if statements always ex execute if something's true. So you can write it that way and it'll still function properly. If is a male, is male equals false. Otherwise, is male equals true. This now will perform the operation to change the gender. So let's take this method over to our main class. And before we have Kip talk, Let's, this is horrible, by the way, to, un, to have a little baby undergo a sex change operation at such a young age. But let's give Kip the operation. So Kip, born Kip Walks, receives the operation and then talks. Let's see what happens. I run this code. My name is Kip Walks. My age is zero. And if you think I'm a male, the answer is true. We've changed Kip's gender. And we did it through the interface of the class that we wrote. Very exciting stuff. Okay. Now, we've got kind of everything we need here for our class. But I'd like Kip to be older. I'd like Kip, I mean, Kip went through this horrible operation. I'd like Kip to actually be quite a bit older, like maybe about 16. How can we make Kip older? What, what way do we have to make that happen right now? The birthday, right. And birthday, to do it, to take Kip to 16, we'd have to execute 16 lines of code for 16 birthdays. But do we know, know some other coding tricks that we can do something multiple times at once? A loop, yeah. Now, we could write the loop right here. That would work. But what if we say Kip dot oops, birthday, but instead of just leaving it blank, what if we gave it information? What if we gave it the number 16? If we said, what if this kind of meant, I want to give Kip 16 birthdays right here. What am I doing? Who can use computer science terms to describe what will happen with what I just proposed here theoretically? Okay. What's going to happen is it is confused because it doesn't have a method like this. It has methods similar to this, so it's going to suggest that we write a method called birthday. But don't we already have a method called birthday? So what's going on there? 
Overloading, right. We're going to overload the birthday method with a parameter 16. So let's see what happens when we try this. We'll use the light bulb. It'll say create method birthday, so it will. We'll go over to the person class, and it should be sitting there, and there it is. Now, at this point, it has no idea what to call the parameter. It doesn't know what it is, so it just named it I. It has no idea. It also did put the keyword public, so I'm going to throw that on there as well. Let's rename I. I is not a good name for it. Let's call it what it is. It's the age. A birthday for that age. Okay? So now let's use what you guys said. Let's run a for loop. From 0 to age, we will call birthday. The other birthday. So what it does is it runs from 0 to age running birthday, which is a different method, which will then add. Now, by the way, we didn't have to do that. We could have also put age plus plus right here. That would have done the same thing. Either way, works fine, hopefully. So now let's run our code and see if we can get KIP to 16. Look at that, KIP 16. And he's a male. Okay. Yes. Okay, so now we have the ability to have a birthday. One more thing. Let's make one more person. Name, please. What should we call our, our third person? Napoleon. How do you spell it? N-A-P-O-L-E-O-N. Is that right? Something like that. Equals a new person. Napoleon Dynamite. So now we've used that constructor, but actually, I'd like to be able to, to do this. I want to have the ability to conjure up Napoleon Dynamite as a person called Napoleon Dynamite, who is already a male and already is 16 years old. And one sort of, when I create Napoleon, I want him to be Napoleon the male at 16. The way I could do that is by building a constructor that deals with that. So I could say Napoleon Dynamite, comma, true, comma, 16. Now it will right away say, well, you don't have a constructor that can do that. And then I will have Napoleon talk. So when Napoleon talks, he should say, my name is Napoleon Dynamite. I am 16 years old, and if you're wondering if I'm a male, the answer is true. But how can I make this happen? By building this constructor. I need to build the constructor that will do this. So I'm going to use the light bulb, or I'm going to go right to the person class, and go up here, and build a third constructor. I'm overloading it for the third time. So now it'll have string name, Boolean is male, comma, int, age. And what are the lines of code will I need to make this happen? I tell you what, I'm going to freeze my screen so you guys can't see what code I'm typing in right now. And I'm going to put in the code to fix this constructor, to make it actually work. And in about two minutes, I'm going, well, less than that, in about 20 seconds, I'm going to release this code. I'm hoping you guys are typing in the same code as me. And if you get it right, we're going to have an air high five in a second here for those of you who, smarty pants, who get this right. Okay, I'm done. I'm ready to reveal my code right away. Anyone else think they got it? Anyone else think they got this code? What is the code to make this constructor work? Anyone think they got it? Steven, you think you got it? You don't know? Christian, you think you got it? Okay. Here comes the reveal. To make this work, add these two lines. This dot is male equals is male, and this dot age equals age. Air high five. You got that? Atta boys. Good job. Okay, so it's the same thing as we did above. We construct the person, and then we assign its values, which actually means, believe it or not, 
this line here, birth, is actually unnecessary. Because all birth did was set them to default values. And since I'm setting them here anyways, why do I need to give birth? It's kind of already happening. But I'm going to leave it there anyways. I think it's useful. But let's run this and see if it actually works. Let's see if Napoleon comes out as a 16-year-old male. And the answer is true. Yes, it worked. So now we have three different options for constructing a person. We can construct a person like we did with LaFonda as just a blank person, a generic female with no name. We can also construct a person as a female with a name. And thirdly, we can construct a person with a preset name, a preset gender, and a preset age. Okay? Using overloading, this all starts to come together. And it gives us a nice ability to work with this. Okay, now, let's get this. Okay, so one last thing now for today. We're going to pick this up after the break. But, and I'm going to just quickly toss it over to the presentation for a sec. The where I want to go now with classes is the following. You now, I hope, have a good grasp of what a class is. But now, I want to move to the next level of classes, which is to take the aspects of biology and connect it to classes and use this feature called inheritance. And here's how inheritance is going to work. With inheritance, we will have our class person, but we will build a class from person called student. And a student is a person. At least every student I've run across has been a student or been a person. So it will share all of its characteristics. And here's how we're going to do this. I want you to jump over to NetBeans. And I want you to go and add a new file to your project. It will be a Java class called Student, capital S. So you're making a Java class called Student with a capital S. And we're not going to put a lot of code in it to it today because we'll work on this after the break. But I want to put one special thing in here. A student up here on the line where we define the class, public class student, we're going to add a little bit to the end here. The keyword is extends person. That was a very powerful piece of code we just added. What it just did was it made a student into a person. So all the stuff we did will now be applicable. And here's what I mean by that. Jump over to the main class. And after person Napoleon, let's make a student called, what should we call our student? Uh, Pedro. 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 Pedro equals a new student. And believe it or not, well, no, don't believe it. We'll just do that. We can make Pedro talk. How is it that Pedro can talk? It's because all the methods and all the things that we built into person also apply to student. So all that code does not have to be copied. It does not have to be repeated. It just extends it, so all the code we write in the person class will now come in to the student class. That is huge. That is a huge saving of time. And I want to throw that over to a theoretical example here. I know some of you just missed that code real quick, but here's where this is theoretically going. Let's say we were making a video game. And we made a very generic class called game object or something like that. And that game object had a bunch of properties like its x, y coordinates and uh, what graphic went into it and stuff like that. And then from there, so we could use that to build things. Like say we were building a Pac-Man game. We could use that to create walls, right? Because every wall is a game object. We could also use that game object to build Pac-Man. But Pac-Man is slightly different than walls because Pac-Man moves around. And we could also make something like ghosts that move around. So maybe we use this to build something called a game character. Because game characters also contain x's and y's, but they also move around and do stuff, and they're alive. 
So I could use that to build Pac-Man, and I could use that to build ghosts, and then I could think about other game objects like the dots in Pac-Man, etc. Again, I'm not going to have to reuse all that code. I'm not going to have to keep writing all that code. Because if I write code in here that keeps track of the X and the Y and a graphic and colors, then by the time I'm writing this class down here, I don't have to write that. I'm going to bring in the stuff from this one, and I'm going to bring in all the stuff from this one. So maybe this class contains like a timer to move it around. Maybe it contains some artificial intelligence that makes it smarter. So by the time I get to here, it's going to be an easier job. As well, if all of a sudden I decide to start my next game, let's say I want to make Space Invaders, well, I still have my game object class, and I still have my game character class. So when I go to build Space Invaders, I'm already starting with my feet running on the ground. Like, I've already got these two classes already built. So now I can build my ship, I can build my enemy, I can build those, what are you, those things you hide behind in Space Invaders? The Walls, sure, walls, right? You get the idea. I'm not starting from the beginning. I'm starting from a point where I already have code that will make my job way, way easier. And that's the power of classes, is that you build them in a way that you can reuse them in the future, and you're not always starting project from ground zero. You're starting project running. That's why I say uh, classes is the most important unit to learn in grade 11.